Okay, so for today we are doing experiment 9, and with this experiment you will be doing some calorimetry and also some heat problems. So one of the important things that you have to be able to do is both heat calculations and calorimetry, meaning delta H calculations. So if we look at our pre-lab questions for the first one, it wants us to calculate the amount of heat, Q, produced by the combustion of 4.05 grams of methane if the delta H of combustion is 890.4 kilojoules. Now, it also gives you a little bit of a hint that if you look on page 111 here, you'll see what the formula for this particular compound is. But if you look at this, we have heat, this is what we're looking for, we have an amount of methane, and we have a delta H of combustion. Now, if we look on page 111, we see that the formula that we are interested in using is Q equals the number of mole of our chemical. So in this case, it is the number of moles of methane multiplied by the delta H of our reaction, in this case the delta H of combustion, divided by the chemical's coefficient. So in order to use this, we have to be able to interpret what each variable is. So the moles of the chemical, well that is the moles of methane, and right now we have grams of methane. So that means that we are going to have to first convert grams of methane to moles of methane. So we take 4.05 grams of methane and we have to convert it to moles of methane. Now in order to do this you know you have to use a molar mass. So we look at the periodic table and we add up one carbon and four hydrogens and we see that the molar mass of methane is 16.04 grams per mole. So we use this as our conversion factor. So we have one mole of methane divided by 16.04 grams of methane. Now if we cancel out our units, we see we set this up correctly, leaving us with moles of methane. So we just calculated number of moles of chemicals. Now once we have that done, then we need to move on to the other two variables. We need to multiply by the delta H of combustion, and that's actually given to us in the problem. So we have the delta H of combustion, which in this particular case is 890.4 kilojoules. Now, before we move on to the chemical coefficient, one thing needs to be mentioned about thermochemistry and heat calculations is, is that sometimes you have to discern what the sign is. And by figuring out what the sign of your delta H or of your heat is, that's going to tell you whether or not your reaction is exothermic or endothermic which is one of the objectives of this experiment. Now, you know that a combustion reaction is an exothermic reaction. It releases energy. So you know that exothermic reactions have negative delta H of reactions. So even though this has 890.4, there's no negative sign there, you know that it has to be negative because it is a combustion reaction, and combustion reactions are exothermic. So you really have to pay attention to the sign when you're doing heat problems and thermochemistry problems, calorimetry problems, because sometimes it's not always going to be given to you. Okay, so we've determined the delta H of com uh, combustion. We looked at the sign. We know that it has to be negative. And the last thing we need is the chemical coefficient. And how we obtain this is through, obviously, a balanced chemical equation. So if we look on page 110 of your lab manual, you see that the reaction for the combustion of methane is one mole of methane for every two moles of oxygen produce one mole of carbon dioxide and two moles of water vapor. So this is where we get our chemical coefficient. And if we look in front of methane, we see that there's nothing there. So that indicates to us that there has to be a 1. So that tells us what our chemical coefficient is, meaning we have 1 mole of methane. 
If this question asked us for oxygen, we would have, instead of one mole, we would have two moles based on the balanced chemical equation. So once you have that completed and you have all your variables written down, you know that moles of methane cancel, leaving us with kilojoules, which is in fact a unit of heat because you know heat has units either joules or calories and kilojoule is a subset of that. So you know you set the problem up correctly. And when we solve for Q, we get an answer of negative 224.8 kilojoules. But we ultimately have to pay attention to our significant figures. And what we see here is, is that this number has three sig figs. We have four sig figs here, four sig figs here. And since we are multiplying and dividing, we know we want our answer with the fewest significant figures. So our final answer for this problem would be negative 225 kilojoules. So we just solved for Q of this reaction. Now, if we move on and look at the second part of these pre-lab questions, what you can see is, is that we have 4.05 grams of methane, so the same amount of methane in this first part. And it is burned and all of the heat loss from the combustion is gained by 1.0 kilograms of 20 degrees C water. And it's also given us a specific heat here. And the question is asking, what would be the final temperature of the water? Now, this, for the pre-lab, is broken down into three different parts. The first thing is, is you have to determine what is the correct formula for you to use. Now you're given a mass, you're given an initial temperature, so we have a mass here, we have an initial temperature, we have Q from the first part of the experiment, and we also have a specific heat. So the best uh, formula for this in order to determine the final temperature would be Q equals MC delta T. So if we take this formula, Q equals MC delta T, and since we are interested in solving for delta T, we obviously need to rearrange this formula so that delta T is all by itself um, in the formula. So in order to do that, we have to divide this side by MC because what will happen is, is that M and specific heat will cancel out. Now, if we do this on one side, we also have to do it on another. So what this leaves us with is the change in temperature is equal to the heat over the mass times the specific heat. Now, that we've rearranged our uh, formula in order to solve for delta T, we need to plug in our values for Q, M, and the specific heat. So if we look, we have Q, which we solved in the first problem. So we know that Q was negative 224.8 kilojoules. And remember, we want to use the unrounded number so as not to introduce more error into our answer. Now, if we look at this, we see 22.48 kilojoules. Now, in this particular formula, there's a certain set of units that we have to use. And we have mass, the unit needs to be in grams. We have delta T, the unit needs to be in Celsius. We have specific heat, which needs to be generally joules per gram degree C. It could also be calories per gram degree C. And for heat, the units should be in joules. So because this is in kilojoules, we need to convert it back to joules. So in order to do that, we know that there are a thousand joules for every one kilojoule. So kilojoules cancels and we're left with joules. Now we need to divide by mass and specific heat. Now, since I'm dividing, I'm flipping this upside down, okay? And the mass that we need to use is not 4.05, but rather, we're looking at the water, so one kilogram. So we're dividing by one kilogram of H2O. Now, 
I just mentioned to you that the unit for mass is grams. So we are going to have to convert this from grams to kilograms. And we know that for every one kilogram, there is a thousand grams. So if we cancel our units, kilograms is left off, we are left with joules per gram. But that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for temperature. We're looking for a degree C. So we still need to divide by specific heat. And what you'll see is, is that this is going to enable us to obtain our unit that we want. So since I'm dividing by specific heat, I'm going to flip this upside down. So we have, we have grams degree C over 4.18 joules. So what we see is, is that joules cancels out, grams cancels out, leaving us with degree C, which is a unit of temperature. So when we solve for this problem, we, have a, we get an answer of 53.77 degrees Celsius. But we have to pay attention to our significant figures. And if we go through and look, we see that we have, although we use four numbers, only three of them are significant. Here we have two sig figs, and here we have three sig figs. So because we are multiplying and dividing, we know we want the fewest, so our final answer can only have four, two significant figures. Now, this enabled us to determine delta T. This is the answer for delta T. It, however, is not the answer for the final temperature. So we have to solve for the final temperature. And you know that delta T is equal to T final minus T initial. Now we have the change in temperature. We also have a, in the initial temperature of 20 degrees C. So we can rearrange this formula to solve for the final temperature. So when we do that, we have delta T plus the initial temperature is going to be equal to the final temperature. So this is an addition problem. So we know we have to line up our decimal places. And again, make sure that you remember that you have to use the original number. And we have 20 degrees it's decimal places after the zero. We add this up. We draw a line where we have the fewest digits past the decimal place. We do our addition, which would be 73.77 degrees Celsius. So we know that only these two numbers are significant. And when we round, we end up with a final temperature of 74 degrees Celsius.